On this episode of the John 1911 Podcast, the state of gun channels, women's sports are over, Ponzi scheme advertisers, and deal of the century. Okay, good evening everybody. This is Kraken and Marky, and this is episode 347 of the John 1911 Podcast. Today is, is it Thursday, August 1st, 1st, August 1st. First at 10.46 p.m. <laughs> Eastern Standard Time. I'm not recording it. We're live. Fuck it. <laughs> and um, uh, we are, you know, getting podcasts out on a more regular basis. We're starting to get more operational uh, here around John 1911. I am at the uh, at the range tonight. Um, I've been here all day. Um, I had to go into the office earlier today and came back out here uh, late afternoon. So, a lot going on and just, you know, trying to get caught up on things around here. And I don't want to talk about politics, but we're going to have to at some point. But I figured we'd start off with some gun stuff that I wanted to I wanted to run by you to see if you've uh, noticed any of this stuff. So have you – you obviously you, – you know, I mean, Kraken, you are aware that we've been having issues with Facebook – lately john 1911 has been having problems um and i think you're aware that there's been um some issues i guess facebook has changed their terms of service or whatever their rules are for guns have you heard about that i've not heard about it but i've been seeing a lot of changes a lot of crackdowns on uh some of my various gun pages and even reaching into uh, I am chats now. They're they're even getting their fingers into that one. Yeah, the um I guess the thing with YouTube, what they've done is they have decided that they are no longer allowing basically sponsored firearm content. So when you see videos where someone's all of a sudden, you know, turns to the camera, turns to the right and goes, This episode brought to you by John1911.com, well, you know, by SDI or whatever, um, that is no longer allowed. Uh, and it's, they've been apparently have been deleting, deleting videos. And I think at one point, Hickok45 and his son, I didn't realize they had multiple channels. I just kind of know that he've got their channel. They basically came out with a video saying this is so bad and they haven't published anything since Maybe, maybe, I don't know, like what it was, like sometime in June, June 18th or something, that they were doubting that their channel was going to survive. And, yeah. you know, I wonder if, like, because you've got, I mean, is Brownells sponsored? I mean, Brownells is an FFL. They can, they're not sponsored. I mean, they're, you know, they're sponsoring themselves. Um, you know, Garantham, he does a ton of, like, almost all of his stuff is sponsored. And, you know, it's just like, it was getting bad for people. And, you know, there would have been a time I would have been worrying about it. You know, I'm kind of, you know, we built John 1911's website to be self-sufficient. It's, you know, it's obviously like the underground bunker. So you can't knock us off the internet. Like someday, it's like someday. Like I feel like Noah, Noah building the ark. Someday you're all going to be off of YouTube, and I'm going to show you. And not that I wish for that, but you know, I, you know, I'm starting to see we're getting into the silly season. We're getting into the politics, and I have felt like Facebook and YouTube have left us alone really since COVID. Now, all of a sudden we're in the election. It's been, it's the election season again. And Facebook has been doing all kinds of creepy shit to us. And everyone's having trouble with YouTube. They don't really bother us because we're so small. No one cares. And I mean, I, I hate to make this kind of prediction because it's really going out of the limb. But you can definitely see the writing on the wall. Like, let's say, for example, Kamala Harris is the next president for a four-year term as opposed to a 25th Amendment. I don't think the gun content is going to survive on YouTube for four more years if she gets elected. And it shouldn't be related, but 
you can just really see that they're trying to crack. They're just they're over it, and they're str- they're strangling all these all these channels that make money doing this. This is their primary source of income. I think they're in big trouble. Have you heard? Just you you're saying you're seeing stuff in Facebook in the in yeah. private messages. Yeah, they're even cracking down uh, on gun content in in. Uh... I am chat rooms that we make for various pages. Uh, we've lost, I don't know, four or five complete pages and the chats that I am chats that went along with them in the last, uh, say, 45 days. Hmm. Uh, just on my personal page, I was kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm a Facebook jail veteran. I mean, I you know I've I've been incarcerated numerous times in in Facebook jail, to the point where you know I've got three or four profiles because there used to always be one or two in jail, and <laughs> kind of after COVID, like you said, they they kind of started leaving me alone, but I'm starting to get flagged again for for stuff that uh, I posted six and seven years ago. So a meme that that flew just fine seven years ago, now I'm catching warnings and you know twenty four hour bans. Where there for a while I was I was at the one more violation and your page is gone, and then they just all of a sudden eased up and now they're back to to cranking it down just for for just about anything that doesn't fall lockstep with a with a leftish theme. Yeah, what's happened? To, uh, what's happened to the John nineteen eleven Facebook page this year is all of a sudden, a couple months ago, they started just. Well, first they would just delete stuff. Like we had our banner page, our banner image. You know, Chris W. He's one of our very new contributors. I, he has a picture of a Smith and Wesson Python revolver in pieces, and it's a gorgeous photograph. And so I put it up as a banner. And it's been up for a couple weeks. I mean, I don't know, two weeks maybe. And it just wasn't there today or yesterday. Was it yesterday or was it today? Um, and I was like, I reached out to you. I'm like, did we get flagged? Like, you know, because normally what happens with Facebook is there's some kind of like crappy message. They, we all get logged out of our apps. And then we have to, like, whenever, if I ever have to log back into a Facebook app, that's a bad sign because yep. it's like, oh, yeah, they, they're they going to put a strike on us or something. And so, you know, but over the past couple months, they've been flagging things. But Facebook has their their terms. And we're like, you know, this is not what it is. We're not selling stuff. All the pictures say nothing's for sale. And we win the appeals. So we have the latest one that they actually dinged us on. It's winnable. It's 100% winnable. It's like some guy who's the moderator. You can see this person's name who's reviewing it. We appealed it. We're going to win it. And now it's just in review for months. And so we have a strike because it's in review. They're not even acknowledging that it's, you know, they're not going to clear it or they're not going to let it stand. So they, if they don't make any decision, it, it, it counts as a strike against the page. And it's like, okay, all right, here we go. We're starting, you know, I, I literally was just start last, late last year was warning, God, maybe Facebook's starting to feel the heat a little bit. You know, they're getting worried about TikTok and they're worried about some of the competition and they're, you know, maybe YouTube is worried about, you know, um, Elon Musk turning Twitter into a giant, you know, video there's an argument that Elon Musk is going to turn Twitter into a call. It's an everything app. And a lot of people in America don't understand this, but around the world and other countries, it's very common that people don't have a phone that is, has all these crazy features on it. They have a basic, like basic crippled phone with one app or two apps and you can go in that one app or those two apps and you can do all your social media, all your communication, all your banking. And it's, 
and the the way things are structured in the United States because of you know monopoly laws and some technology restrictions that that doesn't that's not that doesn't happen here and you know, there's an argument to be made technologically, like I'm sure Elon Musk would make the argument, we're getting left behind by the super apps. But nope, it's nope, it's 2024. And it's not COVID this time. It's the it's it's the fucking election. And it's like, here we go. And now everyone's getting all fucked with. And I'm like, all right, you know, like, I'm just seeing some I'm seeing some weird stuff. So you know, I just I don't know, like, you know, I saw. You know, um, oh, go ahead. Not, not even a gun-related post. I've had. I used to get. Uh, I'd, I'd post something as soon as I hit, you know, enter on it on Facebook. I, uh, I would get a message from Facebook saying, "Hey, this might uh, violate community standards," and basically, do you want to risk it, or do you want to delete the comment? Uh, now I'm not even getting those. I've made a couple of of uh, political posts on actually a politician's page that weren't derogatory, weren't argumentative, were very factual, and they just go poof, they're gone. The original post is there, but my comment and what I was replying to, just gone. No explanation, no any, just poof, gone. so you know, it's even it's it's reaching into you know uh, politics and just social issues and and the guns, of course. So Facebook is definitely cranking up the scrutiny. That's for sure. So I've noticed some stuff over the past. Uh, uh, you know, I'd say this year and starting last year, and I'm just, and we're gonna we're gonna be talking about some like YouTube gun business stuff. Um. And, you know, I noticed Ian McCollum was doing it first. And it's this weird kind of advertising where it's not advertising. It's not, it's not, it's like Ian McCollum has it. It's called getenteredtowin.com. Have you seen any of that? Mm-mm. Yeah. So what it, what it is, is... If I understand, it's kind of like, cause we used to do giveaways and we might do giveaways again in the future, but what he basically does is he's teamed up with, it's, they call it, it's a veteran owned company. Again, I'm not, I'm not trying to sound like I'm being negative about get entered to win. I'm really not, I don't know who they are. I have no clue, but basically it's some company that's paying Ian McCollum money. And then what Ian does is they, they buy a gun, some, you know, desirable gun. And I don't know, like, what's one they've done? They've done, like, I think they have one they just did. I don't know if it's been given away yet. It's like the semi-automatic saw FN 249, you know, from the military collector Mm -hmm. series. Like, that was, I think, the last one they just did. And so what it is, is he does these videos and he's like, you know, talks about the gun, shoots the gun, all the things on the gun. And then if you would like to have this exact model. It's go to get, we've teamed up with Get Entered to Win. And so you go to Get Entered to Win's website. And then what they will have is for that giveaway, they'll have coffee mugs and little knickknack things you can buy that might have like FN 249, like, you know, FN 249 on a coffee mug. Or they might have, you know, a hat or I don't know what it is, like these little tchotchke things. And that if you buy something, and I, I don't know if it's, like if you buy five coffee mugs, you get five chances. Or if it's if you buy anything, you get one chance. I, I haven't paid that much attention, but basically, the people that buy, they can be drawn to win to get a chance to win this gun. Now, part of the reason why that's legal is because these people are not buying a ticket; they're buying an item. It's also the same reason why we can give away guns. You know, we would do it for you know, people that may sign up for an email list, or maybe we would do it from, from customers that, you know, are buying shirts from us or something. And so this is a, this is a model and it's like, well, I noticed Ian's doing it and he's been pushing it. So they're paying him. And I don't know how this is looked at by, 
you know, by these companies, like, you know, like by YouTube being sponsored because you're buying coffee mugs from these people. They're not gun companies. They're not firearms companies. They're not firearms accessories companies, which are all the categories. YouTube is even cracking down on firearms accessories. So if you sell SB braces, if you SB braces does uh, does an advertisement on a John 1911 video, they can yank the video and close the channel down. And no, and no guns are being transacted. It's a, it's a brace. It's a, it's a stock. And so Ian's been doing these, and now I just noticed today, Miss, you know, Mister Guns and Gear, right? Mm-hmm. He's yeah. doing one. He's doing one now too. He's got, uh, he's got a video up today of a Spaz Twelve, or maybe it's yesterday. And you know, I just, I happened to just, I was like, oh, you know, we have one of those. And so I was like, oh, you know what? I'll, you know, yeah, what's going on with the Spaz 12? I just was like, I don't know why. I just clicked it. And he's got a thing, and it's not get entered to win. It's, you know, it's some different group that I've never heard of that is the same thing. And it's, but it's like, you know, stand around and take home a prize. Brought to you by stand around and take home a prize. And, and you can you can take this spa shotgun, and it's just going to be. I didn't go to the website and look at whatever the company was, but you could tell it was the exact same thing. And I'm like, why are these? Where's this coming from? Is this coming from because they've identified this as a new model because it's a way to get money out of people? You know, because if you if a hundred thousand people buy a coffee mug, or ten thousand people buy a coffee mug, and for a chance to win, you know, a three thousand dollar shotgun. It's like, well, that's a profit for everybody. So, you know, but I'm also wondering, is this something maybe they knew ahead of time or got a heads up from their reps at, at YouTube that this was going to start to be a problem? Because it's just interesting, like all of a sudden now, this new advertising model has popped up. When, and when I see stuff like this, it gets my attention. And it was before YouTube was cracking down on these on these videos. And so I was like, huh, what's, what's going on? What's going on with that? I just, I don't know. Like, I just wonder if, I wonder if it's related or not. And you haven't heard or seen anything from that? No, I haven't. Uh, that's a, that's actually a new one on me. I don't, I don't get on YouTube to watch a lot of gun videos. Most of my YouTube take is, is involving reloading and components and, and stuff like that. Uh, I just, I don't follow a lot of, I just don't have time to follow a lot of the, you know, like Hickok 45 and Grand Thumb. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't, like, I don't subscribe. I don't, I don't really, yeah, I don't either. Um, I mean, if there's something I'm particular looking for, like if I'm going to watch, if I'm going to, if there's things I want, I'm interested in following on YouTube as far as gun content. I mean, if there's something hardware specific, like for some niche, something I'm interested in or we're, we're working on, yeah, we'll watch it or we're interested in it. But generally, my gun content on YouTube, I'm more focused on on, on shooting and training and drills and tactics. and you know, Not really tactics, but you know, but you know what I'm saying, like more performance focused content creators, not here's the latest widget by the latest widget. Um, you know, here's another widget. Here's version two of the widget. Here's version three of the widget. Here's the widget. Here it is with pink. Here it is with, with, with zebra stripes. It's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, it, you know, shot shows coming. We got to have another skew. It's like, oh, whatever. Um, so I, I don't know. I just was like, I don't know. It, it just, I feel like maybe, maybe something might be up and I don't quite have my, my finger on the pulse yet. I just don't know if anyone out there is listening to this and they, they have any more information or if I have misstated what I think I know about YouTube, because I honestly don't know that much. I mean, most of what I do with YouTube is I'm uploading our videos um, and we have a very small YouTube channel. So set me straight podcast at john 1911com So, um, what else was there? Something I saw that it was like, oh, you know what it reminded me of? These new companies like Get Enter to Win. Mm-hmm. You, I don't know if, if you've seen this. There used to be, there was an advertising business model. 
And what was this thing that all these, I mean, all these gun channels were doing this for like a couple years. And then I think it was like a, like almost like a Ponzi scheme. Like it collapsed. It was um, like Big Daddy Unlimited, like you, like a buyer's club. Like if you join, like this video is brought to you by, I remember there was Big Daddy Unlimited and then there was some other ones that were similar. Basically you pay $35 a year. It's kind of like a Costco membership and then you get access to their website and then you get discounts. Maybe it's thirty-five dollars a month, but you get discounts on, you know, all the stuff that's for sale, and you can, you know, get red dots, and I think maybe some of them even have guns, and and I and I'm like I think one of these groups, they like it collapsed, like it ran out of money, and I think it wasn't, I think it stopped paying their content creator, they stopped paying their advertisers, their ad, their spot, their yeah, their their. Yeah, they're they're I guess it'd be the advertiser paying their YouTube channel. I don't know what they'd call on what you call those people, their network. Um and I remember there was some bad blood and like people getting ripped off or something. And, you know, like I never paid that much attention to it because, you know, we're not a lot of these companies seem like they had a business model that was all about this would make me think it was a Ponzi scheme. It's maybe it's thirty five dollars a month or whatever it was, but if you spent so much money over a certain period of time, you would it would pay for itself because you'd get enough of a discount that it was worth. But you were having to constantly buy shit all the time, and it's like we don't over here we don't buy stuff like that. I mean, the only thing that comes close to us buying stuff like that would be ammunition, and we certainly don't buy ammunition from dudes on the internet. Um, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I mean, shit's just so expensive to ship it. Like, it just doesn't, that doesn't work. Um, free shipping isn't free. It's built into the price, you know? Yeah. Hey, I want free shipping. I need half a pallet of nine millimeters. So that shit ain't free. You know what I mean? Like, you, you know, it gets to be so expensive that you're having to ship, you have to ship it freight. You're going to get a phone call. They're going to stop that order because be like, we got to talk about this. It's like, okay, well, you know, you, you had the price. And so you said free shipping. So I don't have to drive and load it up into the back of the truck. You'll 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 drop it here at the dock, right? You know, you'll have a you'll have a truck with a with a little forklift and they'll drop it in right at the dock, right? And so yeah, so I don't know. Like I'm just like I'm seeing things in the in the in the guns in the firearms content creator space. I'm just kind of wondering, I don't know, something's up. There's some changes happening. And you know, then the Mr. Guns and Gear guy switching to this get enter to win competitor really perked my ears up. It, it seems like it's a cat and mouse game, you know. The we go back and forth, and when I say we, I mean you know the the firearms community and social media outlets. You know, they they get they decide that we can't do this, so then we tweak it a little bit to get around that rule. Then they finally figure it out, and they make another rule to get around. It's just it—it it always seems like somebody's trying to catch up with the other, and it's just a continually evolving thing. There's, there's just it, there hasn't been been a status quo on. It's understandable. This is okay. This is across the line. You stay on that side of the line, we'll we'll leave you alone. You can post to your heart's content. It's, it's constant. The, the, the goalposts are constantly moving, and that can get really frustrating. Yeah, um, and you know, like I noticed. Well, like oh, a couple things. So this this would be a good transition for me to go into the website thing. So Hickok forty five. Those people. It's the because it's more than just the the father. There's a son involved, and there's probably more than that. So they've got. I was looking at their channel the other day or yesterday, and it's like eight million people. And it's pretty. It's, I it's like, <laughs> damn. Um, and that's just one channel. So, you know, and they've got like this, like I think it's Hickok forty five and son. Then they've got another one called Hickok forty five. Hickok 45 Talks. And so this is a channel where you can tell they just created this channel because it's just a way for the guy to sit and talk and they can run ads against it. 
and get money. I mean, that's not, I'm not saying that's bad because, I mean, no one's more interested in money than me. Like, really. Um, and I'm in like, really, really. But, you know, it's like, here's, here's Hickok 45. Like, he's, I, I was looking at it because I didn't realize he had all these channels. And it was like, what's the best self-defense ammo? And, and he's got one, like, uh, maybe the past couple of days. How high do you hold over your target when you're shooting? Like, in, what it is, is they're just, they're trying to find ways. They are so married to YouTube that they are just fucked. And they apparently have, they've been making YouTube videos for 15 years. They say they have 2,700 videos. And it's all on YouTube, and it's just like, oh, man. And they've gotten so used to, you know, the, I mean, the old man, I mean, he's retired, and they've made money, and, you know, they're fine. But, apparently, like, the son made a good point. He goes, like, he's 34 maybe now, and I guess he started doing it when he was 22. He's like, I've been making YouTube videos with my dad my entire adult professional life. And it's like, woof! Like all of a sudden, just wake up one day and got the blue screen of death, and your channel's gone, and like you're out of a job. And it's like, you know, you think about like the Grantham guy. I mean, he's got—I know he's got a wife and some kids or something. Like he's a—I mean, I don't, you know, I mean that's a job for him out there, yeah. you know. And it's just like, I think we're—I think we're heading towards some kind of, some kind of. Uh, crisis here because you because the hickok guys they put out a video saying we're going to lose our channel i mean basically saying they were trying to be super positive but they're like there's a good chance we're going to go away so you know try to find us somewhere else and then they came back a week or so later and they said we have good news and they've apparently talked to somebody at youtube and it wasn't it wasn't we're going to We've got a resolution. YouTube's going to back off or things are going to be fine. It was basically YouTube told Hickok 45, this is how you can proceed going forward. And then what they, they've apparently decided out of all these, because they're, they're deleting videos from their back catalog. So what they told Hickok 45 to do is to take the back catalog and where you've got advertising and they pulled the video, chop it up and make it into shorts and start a shorts channel or start publishing shorts. And it's like, holy shit. You know, I guess they're going to run commercials against shorts. And it's like, you know, we've done a few shorts over the past month or so. And they've been, I have to admit, it's been very good. And so I'm inclined to do more because it's brought in it brings in people to the YouTube channel and it's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm literally like, why are you growing a YouTube channel? It's like, I don't care about the YouTube channel, but it brings in people to the YouTube channel that maybe I can get them to go to the website or sign up for the email mailing list. And it's like, you know, I think, I think there's big trouble coming with YouTube. Um, and then with that, I can mention this to you and I don't have an answer to this yet. I had asked you this a couple, I don't know, about two weeks ago, or maybe maybe it's about ten days ago. The firearms blog, I've noted they have that's a website, and they had a comment section that their comment section is actually set up to run. I don't even know how you pronounce it. It's it's discus or discuss d i s q u s or q u i s i should know how to pronounce it because we use it john 1911 has this on our john 1911 comment section and you know we used it because it looks good a lot of people when we first started using it um it the farms blog was using it I think um, I think Glenn Beck was using it. I think Breitbart was using it, and you know, over time, I think Discus. I think it even will run commercials, or like it'll put ads in the comments if you get to be big enough. But it's got all these. It's all got all these great kind of like these moderation features and stuff. But I've noticed the Fire and Blog has dropped Discus or Discuss, 
and I was asking you about it. I'm like, what is going on there? Because it's like, did they, there's so many people that are using that on the firearms blog. I'm like, why did they drop this? Did the firearms blog choose to do this? Or did Discus all of a sudden come out with an anti-gun policy? Are we about to lose our Discus account for our website, which is a slight vulnerability to the website? But um, I believe our website is our website is set up that the comments will stay. They'll just be under WordPress under a theme, and but the content will still be there. So, and I guess the Firearms Blog is now doing a. You have to sign up for some kind of account where. I think it's through the firearms blog. And I noticed, is it, there's another, there's a couple other gun websites. There's Bearing Arms and then there's The Truth About Guns. And I can't remember which one or both of them, but they have switched their comment sections to basically you, you you know how like you go and you go to a website, you go to New York Times, and this is an example. You go to New York Times and you, you can't read the article unless you have an account. Well, you go to Bearing Arms and you go to some of these websites, you know, like if a SIG P320 blows up, like some real high traffic article, yeah, you can read that one for free. But if the other articles on the website, on a gun, on a gun website, you got to have like either pay or have an account. Like, like they're putting the shit behind paywalls and I'm like, oh man, I don't. You will never. I mean, I'm not. Look, I'm never going to say never, but I mean, never is a never is a is a big long word. But I mean, I just in no universe can I imagine. I would. Lo- I can I imagine we would ever put something behind a paywall, and I cannot imagine that we would create such such friction for people to leave comments on our website. The reason we use this software is because a bunch of other people, I looked at a bunch of different things, a bunch of other people were using it, and I just, I just, man, I just, you know, if you're getting kicked off social media, I don't know what the firearms blog is or not, but I just, I would love to hear from somebody that that knows, because I have no contact with anybody from the firearms blog nobody they don't you know we're not cool you know we don't go to the events and meet people um you know we are a freestanding business over here but i'd love to hear the rationale why they dropped that commenting software so is it youtube drama like they everyone's cracking down or is it they decided it was better for business for them to harvest customer data in house as opposed to giving it the discus or, you know, I don't know, maybe some third party reason. Like, I mean, like, truth be told, the firearms blog's comment section was a dumpster fire. The firearms blog comment section was an absolute fucking shit show. I mean, you know, they get, they, I mean, so, you know, if you go to the firearms blog, you know, they do reviews, they do paid articles, they do news, they do press releases. We do. We don't do anything paid. We will if a press release comes out that I think is worth mention. Again, it's like you have a new SKU, but it's something that like we're interested in. Yeah, we'll put it up as like a record so we can search and find it. But you know, like they get you know they're 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 obviously they have some kind of paid relationship with Springfield Armory. And so Springfield comes out with, you know, Echelon or, you know, another version of a MIM-filled 1911 or whatever's going on over there. And then, you know, it's nothing but two pages uh, in the comment section of people shitting on Springfield because of, I guess, a deal that Springfield and what's the other company in Illinois uh, – that that made some kind of deal carve out on the anti-gun legislation. Do you remember this one? Uh, Probably don't even remember it. There was it was Springfield Armory and maybe it was Rock River Arms. Are they in Illinois? Yeah, Rock River is. 
Yeah, so I think those two companies, I don't remember what it was, but it was something, some kind of, you know, anti-gun, rest- real heavy restriction on businesses. But because those two companies are big enough, they were able to lobby lobby people. And, like, Springfield Armory got hammered on that for years, yeah. just like how Ruger got hammered for years and Smith & Wesson got hammered for years. But, you know, if I'm Springfield and I'm paying Firearms Blog to do a review on my latest SKU and below my, below my, paid, my paid article, which is what it is, is three pages of somebody shitting on me for shit that I didn't do that was done by people that no longer work here, I would be pretty upset too. And I bet you the Firearms Blog got sick of it. I, 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 I don't know this, but I'm just curious. What happened over there with their comment section? Did they just get tired of it? Did they decide to bring the data in-house? Or did their paid advertisers finally get had it? And they're like, fuck you. We're not going to advertise with you anymore. you got to shut all this stuff down. I just don't know. But if anybody knows, podcast at john com. Let a, help a brother out because I'm dying to know what's going on with some of this stuff. So, yeah, not well, a, not a re- Go ahead. If you remember that article, the thing that kind of twigged you to it was they had a, a publishing date for the article that was like a day old from when you sent it to me. But their newest comment was like four years old. Under that yeah, article, remember? I forgot about yeah, I forgot about that. I think that's probably it's something where the software is pulling comments out of the WordPress back end. Most of these websites use a WordPress as a back end. Um, that's what we use, but we use uh we 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 overlay a, a theme on top of it. Um and so it may be some kind of yeah, it was weird. And I was like and like just by some random chance, I think I happened to catch like what day that they converted. And not that I'm on that website all the time. I just happened to be like, what the fuck? And you know, anything, anything, you know, I've got that, I've got that predator prey thing. You know, if I see any movement, you know, out of the corners of my eyes, I react to it. And I was like, what's going on? What's that? What's going on? And I just, I just, if somebody out, we have people that are pretty high up that listen to this podcast and we know who you are, just knocked over a bottle. We, we know who some of you are. And if you want to talk to me off the record, it will be off the record. But I, I need to have more information from my peers in this space because there's, I feel like there's like all kinds of stuff going on around me and I don't understand why. I'm like, why? What's going on? Why? Why is this happening? So anyway, so there, I look, you know what? We've been going on for 40 minutes and we haven't talked about politics. So amen. <laughs> Uh, just anything not to talk about politics. So, so now that we've done politics, I'm going to let you talk about scrotums and uh, Mr. Hanky Pool, Hanky Poo, uh, in the in the river at the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you're going to have to refresh my memory on the scrotum one. So, okay, so the maybe you didn't hear. So, no, the last you know, thing I heard about the river was, uh, you know, if it's, it's uh, not safe to swim in and you're, are you talking about the, the river, you know, at the Olympics? The, sen- the Seine? The triathlon yeah, I, end? Yeah. 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 The river Seine, it goes right it's through the middle of Paris. Flowing I've, I've, cesspool. Yeah. I've been on it. Tw- I've, I've been there. I've been there a couple times. And apparently that river has not been safe to swim in in at least 100 years. Like this thing makes Lake Erie look like Fiji spring water. Okay. It's like, I mean, it's like, you know, like, holy shit. And they're, well, did you see the video? So they did some, they had to cancel because of bacteria levels or whatever. They had to cancel some event or move it back Uh, because it's hot. Yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, so that was happening. And then um, somebody got out of the river and puked on on camera. Like, just, <laughs> I think it was puked and puking. And it's like, they're like, oh, turn the camera away. And, you know, it's, it's, it used to be a joke about the high river. You go diving in, you come with a turd in your mouth. Um, 
they've cleaned it up apparently since, you know, like 50 years ago. Like, I mean, I'm not saying it's like, you don't want to drink, you know, have raw water out, you know, like a, you know, drink, drink a cup of water out of it without treating it. But apparently it's way better. Um, but so the opening ceremony for the Olympics, did you see all the gay tranny shit? The, uh, the, the uh, last, the last supper. supper? Parody? Yeah. That they claimed wasn't, it was actually, what, some Greek mythology or something that just happened to resemble the Last Supper, but it's really not, but we're sorry we did it. Bullshit. Bullshit. That dog don't hunt. Bullshit. Um, Well, then, you know, so, 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 I don't know if you heard. So, you know, it's like they're looking, and like, apparently, like, I didn't even watch it, because I'm like, I'm not that interested you know, in the Olympic, like, I don't know why I'm just not that interested this year. And, you know, part of me is a little like, oh, there's going to be some kind of attack or something over there because there's been all these issues. And so, like, there was an attack. Somebody sabotaged all the trains and they kind of downplayed that. Did you hear that? And that yep. had to be like, that was not like just some schmuck. That looked like an organized, possibly nations. Whoever did that had to have recon on the entire train system to know where to cut things. All throughout, you know, it wasn't like somebody went in and got one junction box and like, ha ha, we got you. Like it was this all over the country. And so it's probably Russians. It could be, it could be Muslims, but you know, it's probably Russians. Well, but um, Ivan's a little salty about not getting to play at the Olympics anyway. Yeah, I don't, you know, I didn't even know that they weren't allowed to come to the Olympics, to be honest with you. I didn't know we were back to doing that like it was 1979, 1980 Afghanistan. 1980 Moscow was it because it was 80 Moscow and then 84 was LA right is that Mm -hmm. right so the Russians invaded Afghanistan in 79 and we boycotted the Olympics in Moscow which really embarrassed the Russians pissed them off but the big backlash was and this has kind of been lost to history is there were all these athletes that have been training for a decade to peak at the right time to go to the 1980 Olympics. And they were American and they couldn't go. They could, we were, we were, and they, they certainly couldn't go to the Soviet union. If the U S government wasn't going to fly them in there, you know what I mean? It's not like Uh Russia today. And like it, it, it wrecked, it wrecked a lot of people. And, you know, like, it's been so long. Most of that's been lost to history, but there's a there were a lot of athletes that felt like they got fucked, American athletes. And yeah. so then so then the Russians to get back at us, they boycotted 84, which was in Los Angeles. And so I didn't know I honestly did not know until a few days ago that the Russians were banned from the Olympics. Now, I don't know if I would I, I necessarily agree with that. I, just, I have to think about it. I mean, I know it'd be uncomfortable for some people, but you know, it's like, you know, I mean, Jesse Owens fucking ran in front of Hitler in like 1930. When was, is that 34? When was the, when was Jesse Owens? When was Jesse, black Jesse Owens? Uh, 30, uh, 34 or 36? Yeah, but black, black, black Jesse Owens was winning the gold medals over the master race. You know, in Germany. And it's like, if you're boycotting all this shit all the time, you don't get a chance to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you're just hurting the athletes. You well, know? And, and the like, Olympics I, I have become so political anyway. No, they're, the, they're, now, the, the, the Olympics have become a giant business and a scam yeah. for the Olympic Committee. There's so much graft and theft and bullshit that goes on that these they become – you know, it's it's the same problem that I have with a lot of things. Organizations become so large, they become ineffective. And the Olympics has gone from, you know, being about, you know, hey, you know, like they say they got the fast runners over there. We got the fastest runners over here. I say we settle it. You know, it's gone from that to all this fucking, you know, Hillary Clinton's and, you know, uh, you know, honestly, George Bush is wanting to fuck with all of everybody's fucking with each other all the time over this stuff. And it's like, 
You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a party for everybody, that means some of those people you're not gonna like. You know, did you hear that the um, the Chinese apparently are getting busted on? Um, they're getting busted on uh, possibly their 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 they they're doping their uh, their athletes. They're apparently no. giving their half. No, giving their, Olympic yeah. competitors doping it up. <laughs> yeah. And um, apparently the one the one that the Chinese are doing is they are using um, it's some kind of heart medication that I guess gives a lot of endurance. Yeah. And uh, apparently a lot of them popped for it in Japan, but then the World Anti Doping Agency didn't even release the results until like very recently. And then, or didn't release 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 the results until, like after the Olympics, and and then then the Russians, so the 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 or the China, no, the Chinese, so the you know what the Chinese defense was like all of these like swimmers and all these people tested positive for this heart medicine, so then so their so their excuse, what they said this is the Chinese government said this. They said that their athletes inadvertently were exposed to this medication because malicious Taiwanese actors went into the hotel where they are staying and sprinkled it on the skillet and the meat that they were eating from the kitchen at the hotel. That's their official. That is their official risk. And the world anti doping organizations like that sounds good to me. And it's like, uh huh. Like we'll see, we'll see. You know, we'll, well see. The, the one that's getting me is is you. You obviously have probably heard the story about the the trans boxer today. Holy fuck, dude! I'll tell you what that is gonna that is gonna pull Donald Trump up about three points. That will. I, I mean, this boxer failed failed the uh, the uh, testosterone test in 2023 that the IBC administered, and this is a case of, of you know pot meat kettle because the International Olympic Commission does not follow any sanctioning rules or recognize the IBC anymore because of financial malfeasance by the IBC. Don King. <laughs> Don, Don King. So, so <laughs> you have this person that, that failed the test, and, and the way I understand it, it, it's like it wasn't one of them, it's close, come back in two weeks, you'll probably be okay. It, you know, it was way over and they just went we don't care we don't we don't follow their their testing anyway and literally just knocked the snot out of the italian boxer for 42 seconds well we're okay so what's being reported in the news that this this boxer they're even reporting it as a uh as a dna male yeah so yeah, born, born a male. But where where is this boxer? What nation is this boxer from? Algeria. Oh, thank God. At least he's not fucking ours. I just, you know, I mean, like, I mean, seriously, I just assumed he's a fucking American. No, Al- um, Algerian. Or European. So wait a minute. So, okay, wait a minute. So it's like, so, so wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Let me just hold on. Wait a minute. You're telling me. You're telling me that a dude who was transitioned to a woman to box at the Olympics is from Algeria. Yep. A Muslim country in North Africa that used to be a French colony. Ev- evidently can fly because when they threw it off a building, it didn't go splat. <laughs> that is a terrible joke. Most people are not going to get that. That is terrible. Um, that is terrible. Um, yeah, you laugh. Yeah, yeah, you know what? 
our commie show trial is going to be off the chain, brother. You're going to be in the docket with me. So, you know what? We're going to be standing there together. Um, <laughs> um, hey, I can't get a ban from John 1911 like I do Facebook, you know. So Yeah, yeah. yeah you can't. You, you know, you've got moderator privileges. Um, you basically run that guy. You run that page. So, <laughs> so okay. So, let's get – so, the, the fucking – I heard, I haven't seen it. Is it true that the male boxer knocked the headgear off the female boxer? Didn't Is knock it completely off, but turned it about a quarter of the way around to where they had to call time. Straighten oh, the God. headgear back up, recinch the chin strap, and the fight lasted, I don't know, maybe another 10 or 12 seconds. Yeah, I think it was like a 43 – it was like a Mike Tyson 40, fight. It was like 42 a, yeah. seconds, and the Italian boxer's face, when when they when they did the hand-raising, was already turning red-blue and puffing up. Yeah. I mean – I heard she, she – yeah, yeah, I heard she, she got I heard, whacked. I heard – I haven't seen it, but I heard that she said the two hits that she took, she's never been punched like that before in her life, yep. and she's a boxer. And they weren't, and it's they like, weren't even – good clean i mean they weren't like with a lot of good hip motion they were like arm punches and you know did, didn't have oh, to follow through with the hips it, and it, mean, it just, wasn't like a it wasn't even rocked or still wasn't even like a mike tyson turning oh, the hips no. And th- oh no these uh, he, were, mike tyson would kill that girl literally kill her yeah, I mean, if this if this fighter had gotten a you know a good cross with some hip motion, it would have been lights out. And you know what? I don't know this because I've been busy working at the range. I'm sure all the usual suspects are going to be all out saying, "Yay, feminism! You go, girl! This is." You know, she's a woman. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I mean, I, 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 was, I mean, like I've said this before, I mean, like I've worked thirds and I've worked, I mean, I worked, you know, as a dirt bag and worked at night. I've known, I've known more trans people than the average cat. And I, some of them I even would have considered friends. Like, really? I mean, even today, mm-hmm. if I saw them, I'd still consider them friends. We'd be friendly. But it's like if you think that this this these people this, that this is okay, I don't care. I don't care what the public says. I don't care what the media says. I don't care what the you know what what the Beltway in Washington says or ABC, NBC, CBS. And I'm not one of these people that's like trying to like Captain Save a Ho on women. Women, in most cases, have earned what's coming to them. You know, like whatever they get in life, good or bad, just like everybody else. But this is fucking stupid. This is this is batshit crazy. And these, these women that have worked their whole lives to get a chance to go to the Olympics and bring home the gold, and a dude is, like, going to put them in the hospital and take that shit from them. At this oh, there's going to be another that, one tomorrow. Fuck. There's there's a second trans female fighter, male fighter. Oh, there's another the one? Like an actual them. second fighter? Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Uh, From the U.S.? Oh, shit. And I could know. Uh, Please be another Muslim Ta- country. Taiwan, maybe? No, it was an Asian uh, country. I Alu believe. Akbar all of a sudden has a whole new kind of thing going. <laughs> so. I believe I can fly. Yeah, I mean, it's like. I mean, it's like, okay, like if this is what we're doing, if this is what we're doing, then no more men's and women's. Because here's the thing. It's not fair. It's not fair that the Algerians get to put a boxer in that can stomp on our women. So we should get to send Mike Tyson's in to stomp on his fucking ass. And that's where this goes. That's what this is for. The reason we have these set-asides and these carve-outs and these women's spaces is so they can compete in their lane. And if 
if if we're if we're going to be in a situation because here's the thing what okay so let's say the algerian goes home and they're all like al akbar you're great brought home the gold medal and they're like in four years we're sending five more trans women for the for the women's women's thing and then they're like we're going to send some trans women to the some other sports and we're going to start cleaning up or just what, stop well no at what point do other countries start going you know it's this is literally like the um you know like the doctor strange love like the missile gap or sir we have a trans gap we got to start getting our fucking trannies in there so it'd be like hey mike you want to go get a gold medal I ain't, I ain't no fucking trans. What y'all you do is fucking tell them. Do it for America. All right. Go in there and start cleaning up, defending America, bring the gold home. I mean, like, we, if there's no, okay, so you telling me the Russians can't all of a sudden just start all a bunch of Ivans with lipstick, just start showing up and being like, hey, we're, tra- I'm trans. How dare you? Ugh, I'm, I'm, my name is. My name is Tanika. You know, what are you going to say? No, you're not. And it's like, then all of a sudden, it's like they're cleaning up. And it's like, it's now become, it's it's gone from individuals taking advantage of these weird loopholes to now entire countries. If countries would dope, I mean, if if the Chinese would go through all this crazy shit to dope their athletes, and then try to hide it from the World Anti-Doping Organization. They make up these crazy stories about Taiwanese bad actors are spiking the hamburgers of our athletes. Well, they why they they why wouldn't they bring in a, a bunch of six five, you know, East East Coast Chinese meat eaters to say they're all names Lucy Liu and just clean up? Why wouldn't they? The Russians were so committed. The Russians were so committed to doping their athletes. They invented new steroids because no one knew these steroids existed, and so you couldn't test for them. And then when it would get out, then they would invent new steroids. And that's where these boutique, like, crazy steroid shit came from was from the russians it's like if people are going to invent crazy fucking steroids so they don't show up on drug screens because no one knows it's a state secret you know i don't know what you'd call it like compound 47 you know if they're going to do all that shit why wouldn't they just be like today my name is tanika you know, what are you gonna do? You gonna what are you gonna do? Hit me? You know, you gonna beat me up? You know, you gonna slap me around? Like my name's Tanika. You know, I'm a Vanka. And it's like this is crazy. I mean, it's just like and all these women I mean, I hate to say it like this, but all these like these I mean if we're gonna talk in modern politics, if I was gonna I'm not saying this. This is the way mainstream media in the United States talks. So I'm using their language. Okay? It's not the Latina women that are supporting this. It's not the black women that are supporting this. It's not the Native American women that are supporting this. It's not the um, uh, the uh, South Asian Indians that are supporting this. It's the white women from the fucking suburbs and the the fucking blue haired women that are fucking supporting this. And you bitches are fucking out of your minds and you're looking like assholes. And it's like you guys wonder why Donald Trump wins elections. And I don't know if he's going to win or not or he's going to ever. But you know what? It's not just Donald Trump. It's all of them. You guys wonder why. You get these politicians that you just like can't believe this is happening because Mitt Romney Mitt Romney can't win against you people and why you have to get you know like super right wing 
fucking aggressive people because y'all fucking retards. You know, this is wrong. And this is just like, this is as wrong as, you know, the videos in the South in the 50s and 60s of all these fucking white people talking about their, you know, all these bullshit phrases. And I'm from the South, so don't at me with this shit. You know, I have family members that fought for the Confederacy. I have family members that own slaves, so miss me with this. Don't fucking try to tell me the fucking Civil War wasn't about slavery. But, you know, like, white power and, like, white schools and, you know, we're going to do all – and all these people saying all this shit on video and in the future they look like fucking monsters and we've got – Black people running around today that are saying stuff that is just as crazy as what these white people were saying in the 50s. And, you know, and that is not going to age well. And then we got these women going around saying it's okay for Ivanka to fucking beat up these little girls. And I hate to say it, there's a, you know, there's a average you know, three to four inch height difference minimum. And, or was, what is it? What's the, is it, is it 30 pounds and how many inches average between an average man and an average woman, the difference in height and weight? Is it four, is it four inches and 30 pounds or something like You're right like in the that? ballpark. Yeah. You're right. In the yeah. Ballpark. Uh, yeah. That's the average. That's not, that's not Olympic athletes. Going around saying this is okay. I mean, like in 30 years, there's all these people that are going on TV and saying this stuff and advocating for this stuff because they don't even – and they don't even know why. They're showing up with banners and doing things and like coming outside of judges' houses and just acting like crazy people for shit that they're not going to be able to defend in the future. And it's just like y'all better be ready because you're going to look terrible. Because you're not going to have in the future three major network television news channels that are going to be the gatekeepers on what is talked about and what is not talked about from recent history. Because now everything comes out all the time. Everything comes out. And if y'all don't believe me, all you lives. Just remember the late hit you did on George W. Bush and his DUI. They tried real hard to keep that shit fucking quiet. And, you know, and they tried real hard to keep old George Bush's, you know, youth. He's drunk as a skunk and doing cocaine. And the Republicans still don't even want to acknowledge that that was true. And all came out. All of this is coming out. None of this is, none of this is ever going to go away. This is this this fight. This fight of this guy beating the crap out of this girl at the Olympics is going to be in the history books, just like Donald Trump getting shot in the head. Mm -hmm. You know, and people don't even realize what they're watching. See, here's the thing that gets me. The let's just call it the the fifty five to sixty year old liberal white suburban woman. Who is telling us that you know that that guy is a woman because they've transitioned, and you know uh, he should be able to be a woman. That's what he identifies with. His testosterone level is here, so technically he's a woman. So he is now a she, mm -hmm. and they should be allowed to compete in women's sports. Are the exact same demographic that 30 years ago was screaming girls should be allowed to do more than just be cheerleaders for boys sports, the birth of Title IX. They are the same people that lobbied for Title IX mm -hmm. that are now saying it is perfectly okay for a man to take a few shots, get his testosterone level down, and beat the ever-loving snot out of women. Spike a volleyball so hard that a female volleyball player, a born female volleyball player, 
has a traumatic brain injury from being did hit she, in the head with. Did with she the get spine. like broken? Didn't she get broken bones or something? Oh too? yeah, broke broke her nose. I believe her orbital socket. She had a TBI, and and they will defend that. Even though well, they no no they ago, no, they they didn't defend that dude. They memory hold. You can't find that story with a search warrant. But as the story was going on, that it was being it was being portrayed as a one off. Sports can be dangerous. Uh, a woman could have done that. A biological woman could have done that too. It's perfectly fine. It's it's not emblematic of the overall issue. And the same people feeding us that bullshit were the same ones that 30 years ago were lobbying for Title IX so that women could have their fair place in society. Oh, it's worse than that. It's so much worse than that, and I can prove it to you. It's right in front of your face. Are you ready? The same people that say that's okay out of the other side of their mouth on the same video camera will blame every problem they have in their lives on toxic, toxic, toxic masculinity. masculinity. Yep. And it's like, you have got to be shitting me. This is, you just have a bunch of these people that they don't have any, look, I'm not saying this and I'm really not, but there, you know, look, there are, there are extremes in any organization. There's extremes in any spectrum, okay? You can find some woman who is a meathead and she could fucking hold me down on the ground and beat the fuck out of me if she wants. I'm sure there's woman, there's a woman out there, okay? You know, you can find, you know, some, some, you know, white guy that hates all minorities and white power and whatever, but I can also find a bunch of black guys and some of them that are like, kill whitey, white devil, okay? So we can find extreme examples, all right? But these, there are people in the extremes who will make an argument that women are stupid they're emotional. They shouldn't have the right to vote. They shouldn't have, you know, the extreme example, whether you want to be in Saudi Arabia and, you know, women can't drive or whether you're some, you know, like what would, what would be the, what would be the, uh, the, the libs? They would call it like the, uh, the, what's, what's the, the, not the Stepford wives, the, where they all wear the red shit and I don't mean some made up story, you know, some movie, um, you know, where like all these women are basically almost like Christians in burkas, basically. Okay. Okay. But these people don't even realize is they're these, these, this, these demographic, these, especially it's the women. Okay. Who are advocating for men beating up, women but then blaming everything on toxic masculinity are making the case to the people that hate them the most that you can't trust these women to even do basic logic and it's not going to serve them well because that's how you that's how you get candidates that get elected because everyone's so frustrated at, you know, just the most basic things can't be recognized. The basic truths can't be recognized. You know, we everything has to be shades of gray. And it's just like, just stop. You know, I'm sorry you're trans. I'm sorry. Life is hard. Everybody's life is hard. This is going to be your burden. You know, you can play on the chess team. You know, we do something else. You know, everybody's got something. But this idea that we're going to wreck all this stuff, especially all these things we've made for women. You know, we could, I mean, like, think, I mean, like, I can make, here's an argument. I can make an argument to solve this problem for everybody because it's true equality. We're going to have no gender in any of these sports. And 
it's going to make, it's going to save so much money and it's going to save so much time. It's an economic argument. We're going to have one basketball tournament. We're going to have one swimming tournament. We're going to have one weightlifting tournament. We're going to have one boxing tournament. We're going to have one swimming tournament. Bada boom, bada bing, get your medals, and everybody goes home, and the Olympics is over in about four days. That's what we can do because if you're going to do it for some of it, you're going to have to do it for all of it. And, you know, these there's people that are using these issues. Not because they don't, they're so blind, they don't even realize, they refuse to accept that they do this. Basically, it's, yes, queen, you go, you can be whatever, and they use that as a cudgel to beat people, because it's an advantageous to them. And then, whenever they want, they decide they're victims, and these same people are toxic masculinity is responsible for every problem I have in my life. And whatever best suits them at whatever problem they're facing is they get to be, they're super tolerant for everything and they're not responsible for anything. Or everything is men's fault. And whatever benefits them at any given moment in any situation that they can get the most juice out of the argument or leverage, they will just flip flop like literally in the same, in the same moment. And it's like, you wonder why people get fed up. Like, people are fit to be fucking tied. And Donald, I I would bet you Donald Trump is going to make this boxing thing a big, he's going to go after this. Because it's going to go right back into the whole thing. You know, she's, yay, you know, yay women, yay this. What's a woman? Uh, I don't know. Supreme Court, you know, Supreme Court Justice you know, nominee, what's a woman? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, I'm not qualified yeah. to answer that. Yeah. I mean, um, K- K- Katanji Jackson Katanji Brown. Brown. Yep. She's on the Supreme court. She's one of the highest, most accomplished attorneys in the country. Jurist, because she's on the Supreme court and she's going to confirmation. What is a woman? Uh, 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 and it's like, holy shit. And it's not that I'm like using it as a, like, a cudgel against her, you know, to like keep her off the Supreme Court, but it calls into question your ability to say, is two plus two equal four? Even if you don't want it to be four, is it four? You know? Do I like the fact that this kid with an AR-15 in Pennsylvania decided to pierce Donald Trump's ear? No, and it's an AR-15. And, you know, the guns purchased legally. And, you know, it's it's all fucking true. It's all true. And it's like, all right, you know. But the other side can't fucking admit anything. They can't give up an inch. And if you push him on anything, it's toxic masculinity or some other bullshit argument. And I mean, okay, did you the opening ceremony? Did you see for the for the Olympics? Did did you see the analysis of the opening ceremony? Nope, I have purposely not watched a single bit of it. The only thing I know of it is the boxing match today because it was all over the news and the last supper for me the the olympics is just it's too political it's too business oriented it's not in the spirit of who's got the best athletes and let's let's find out who the fastest 100 meter dash is it's it's just too political and i'm just not gonna waste my time on it yeah, well, I'm going to come back. That's a good point you made. But so, but I didn't watch. I haven't watched any of it either. I just see kind of like reports. And they were talking. They were showing the you know the fake ass Last Supper. Well, there's two things that were pointed out that I was like, holy shit. So the first one is there's a guy that was like painted blue. Okay, I guess you saw him in the photograph, and I guess maybe he he started singing or something. He might have even been under the like he might have been served like a pig. Like he might have been like like the food or the platter on the table. I think I'm not even certain. The first thing is apparently 
in France, that guy is like some really famous, super like in vogue entertainer. And the French are so proud that the world got to see this guy. It's like it's like he's their Lady Gaga. I mean, I'm making that up, but it's like it's somebody in in that country. They're all like, he's he's fucking great. They're like, oh my god, they're on the world stage, and he's so great that the people just knew. And then the second thing is, there's a person up there for the opening ceremony in the in the fake Last Supper thing, and his balls are hanging out. I'm not making that up. People are like, that guy's balls are hanging out of his fucking, and it's some. Looks like a gay guy. I mean, I, I hate to see whatever, but I mean, you know, I, I can't see a gay, a straight guy dressed like that. And I don't know, it just seemed gay to me. Maybe it's the, the patent leather, but his balls are hanging literally, and it's like on purpose. Yeah. And apparently there's like a little kid next to him. I like that it's a midget or a minor, and I don't know which is worse. And it's like the French have – this – you know, I'm. I know I'm going on and on. I'm. I'm sorry. I just. You know, I'd like to say that this has got to be the worst fucking. You know, Olympic opening. The French just fucked all this up, and you know whatever. But it's not. No one cares. They're, no, they're all happy. They're all happy with themselves. Did you see the um? Because uh, people are like, it's not the worst Olympics, and so they keep showing all the different like things that happened at the Olympics where things were fucked up. Have you seen this? Like there was a, they wanted to go green that none of the Olympic village has air conditioners and it's like 98 degrees. Yeah. And they're all safe. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that, yeah. I'm sure it's like, Oh, how convenient all these athletes got to come in. They're not comfortable. They can't sleep well. So maybe they won't perform well, but all the local athletes, you know, wink, wink, nod, nod, they can just drive in from their house. Um, They have a bed bug issue. Oh, do they? I haven't. Yeah, in the Olympic Village. Yep, they have a bed bug issue on top of that. Hey, they don't have bald eagles in France. They could just use DDT, right? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Everyone relax. One, well, maybe they don't have bald eagles because they use the DDT. I don't know. But like, there's um, because it's funny because people, you know, again, like the blue haired bullshit people. It's like you know they deny how bad this is. And then they try to point to other things, and it's funny. And then when the next thing is bad, they'll deny that this is bad, but four years from now, when the next one's worse, they'll be like, no, it's not as bad as this one. And then they'll, then they'll acknowledge this one was bad. And there were two things that they were showing. One was funny. The opening ceremony, it was, I think, in South Korea. And I don't know if they were North Korea. I don't know if they were North Korean troops. Or South Korean troops, if they had like done, because they'd done some kind of joint stuff. I think they tried to do a few things together, and like these, you know, it's like they're it's like they're they're honor guard, and you know, they're real snappy with the, you know, they got the the knee high boots and all the fully starched outfits and all that, and they're trying to flip the flags, to throw the flags, <laughs> and the one flag lands on the soldier's face. And the other, and like the cameras, and the other guy's looking, and he's trying not to laugh. And I don't know if it was at that Olympics or one that was older. So they, you know how they they always have to light the flame, right? So what they had done is they had released all these white doves of peace. This was probably during the Cold War. All these white doves of peace in the stadium. And a bunch of the white doves, had, they went to sit up on top of the pedestal where they light the flame. So then they go to light it, and all these birds catch on fire, and they're smoking on fire doves flying, you know, flying <laughs> through the stadium, tumbling, and they're like, the, you know, NBC's like, oh, and cut away, you know, and it's like, it's, <laughs> oh, God, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. And so I want to apologize again to the listener. Hold on. I'm just going on and on and on about how much how fucked up the Olympics what, is. What one more though? You know, just you, you got the whole Last Supper thing, and, and everything else is going on. You know, the triathlon in in Shit River. If you've been in the Navy and been to the PI, you understand the Shit River comment. Uh huh. But yeah. but you you sit here and you say to yourself, well, it is France. We have had the Last Supper routine going on 
they 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 can't fuck it up any worse, right? And, and then they go and seriously, they had Snoop Dogg carrying the torch. You know, I'm not even. I was waiting for him to light a giant doobie with it. You know, I'm not even mad about Snoop Dogg because the reality is. That's the least fucked up thing. It's the least fucked up thing it is. I mean, Snoop Dogg has become, look, how is Snoop Dogg any different than Cheech and Chong at this point? Well, yeah. You know, and the thing is, all the kids today are like, who are Cheech and Chong? Um, you know, they think that's a cartoon from like the 20s, you know. Um, <laughs> but it's like, you know, it's just this cultural icon, pseudo famous person who's, I don't know, he's probably worth a lot of money. Um, actually, and I think about it, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a billionaire. Um, you just, you just, you know, but it, it, it's fine. I mean, you know, everyone's got to have, they can have Snoop Dogg. I mean, you know, not everybody can be as dramatic as Muhammad Ali with Parkinson's shaking, holding up the, the holding up the torch. That's how so, the birds got lit on fire. He missed. No, it was, uh, I don't remember if it was, oh no, he did the one where they shot the arrow, I think, right? Is that I, where they I shot the arrow? I don't remember now. But I think the one where they lit the birds is somebody held the torch up to the, to the, um, to the, uh, to the, to the pedestal. And like the pedestal was close enough that all the doves, a bunch of the, like, I mean, it, it could have had like 15 birds. It wasn't like one bird caught on fire or two. I mean, it was, I don't know, 15 to 30 birds sitting on this thing. And it's like, I mean, like smoking, flying. I mean, it's, it's. It, it, I mean, it looked like National Lampoon. Every like, redneck you know. from Texas seeing the flaming doves fall down into the crowd going, Cindy Lou, Cindy Lou, they got dinner yeah. for this. It's just like, you know, it's like the, like the WKRP thing. Like, I swear to God, I thought turkeys could fly. I mean, it's like nobody thought about this one. You know, um, you know, uh, it reminds me of the, the movie. Um, uh, what was the Chevy Chase movie where he's an arms dealer? Uh, the, is the perfect deal or what's it called? You remember this movie? And um, Not off the top of my head. It's all his movies from like the 80s. And Chevy Chase is an arms dealer, and this movie, I'll have to find it. Um, and it actually, if you think about it, this movie actually showcases the first milita- real military drone. Because they, the Pentagon, they've got, this, they've got this thing where it's, you know, this flying, they don't even call it a drone. It's this flying armored, you know, flying robot thing. And it's got missiles and guns and whatever. And um, it looks remarkably like a drone today in some ways. And um, they have the, all the brass in these bleachers, and the and it, you know it's remote controlled, and it goes crazy and starts shooting at all the generals. And um, it's going crazy; they can't get under control. And there's all these guys in their their white lab coats in this trailer, and they're trying to you know to get it. They get this thing under, get it on. Everyone's, you know, it's done. And the the program manager walks in, and he's like, "What the hell is going on?" And the guy goes, "It's okay. We it's got water on it because we washed it. But you know, once it dries out, it'll be fine." And the, and the <laughs> scene cuts, and it goes, "Haven't you assholes ever heard of rain?" So it was just, you have to see the, you have to see the, it's a, I have to put some clips up. What was, is that the, the the deal of the century is the movie. It was called deal of the century and Chevy Chase is an arms dealer. It's a comedy, but uh, as odd as that is to, but I I enjoyed it because of the guns and the comedy, even as a kid, that's probably, I don't know, it might be 82, 84. Um, And that reminds me of like the entire Olympics. So I don't know. We've been going for a while. I mean, I was, I was going to do a blotter and I was going to do all kinds of stuff. And it's been an hour. We've, been, we've gone way over. I would just, would just call it. Yeah. Is that, uh, yeah. So we'll all just right. do another well, one wraps, here pretty soon. This wraps up episode 347 of the John 1911 podcast. If you want to see any stories or pictures, links, everything we discussed, please go to the website at john1911.com, the J-O-H-N-1911.com. Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun, everybody. Good night.
Have a good night.